Um, thank you very much to the organizing team to giving me the, this opportunity to have a talk at this meeting. Um, I'm currently doing a postdoc at the Univers University of Lausanne with Charles Mullen, but today I will present um, work from my PhD, which I did with Fred Guillaume at the University of Zurich. So let's start right away. <clears throat> As we've seen in the previous talks, environmental change is a major challenge for most species. And predicting the response of species to, to these changes are a major challenge for us biologists. And one reason why this might be the case is that species are not uniform entities, but they exhibit some intraspecific diversity. In the bottom graph here, you see some hypothetical species range and four populations placed within it. And now let's assume that um, we measure the environmental tolerance of each of these four populations, just illustrated in the top graph. You see four tolerance curves um, uh, illustrating the fitness of each population depending on the environment. And you can see that the species niche here is the sum of many smaller niches of the single populations. And if you would imagine to transfer individuals from one population to another population, and they would experience a reduced fitness. So this pattern here is an example of local adaptation of the populations to the local conditions and local adaptation has been shown to be quite widespread. So this pattern here can also be seen um, some, some common pattern. However, I want to put your focus now on a different aspect, meaning that the tolerance curves exhibit different uh, breadth, meaning they can tolerate a different range of environmental conditions. So the variance of these curves. And this also has been shown to be common, for example, in ectoterms. The populations in some range can tolerate a broader range of conditions compared to populations in another range. Um, and this might be important for future responses to environmental changes because some populations might be able to tolerate uh, environmental change better than others. But before we can use um, this pattern to predict future changes, we first might need to understand what actually causes this pattern to emerge, which evolutionary process favors the evolution of spatial differences in environmental tolerance between populations. And one, popula and one potential explanation is range dynamics. So in a recent meta-analysis from Leslie Lancaster, he could show that these within species differences in environmental tolerance primarily occur in species that have dynamic species ranges. And while species that are stationary, they um, don't show such strong differences in tolerance. So something that is going on during these range shifts and range dynamics might favor the emergence of this, these differences. However, there are different drivers of range dynamics. Could be niche expansion, when evolution allows a species to expand its niche, but it could also be environmental change that um, happens on local or global scale. And in this theoretical study, we want to get a better understanding of how the subspatial differences in environmental tolerance, so the breadth of these uh, tolerance curves, evolve during different scenarios of, of uh, range dynamics. To answer this question, we used individual-based simulations with a software called NEMO which is uh, coded in C++ and allowed us to simulate an entire species range. The species range was composed of 42 patches that were linearly arranged and individuals could inhabit these 42 patches um, and migrate to, uh, to neighboring patches following a simple step, stepping stone model. Along these 42 patches, we installed an environmental client, meaning that environmental conditions were increasing from the left to the right. And in at the beginning of each simulation, we assume that only half of these patches were occupied, those on the left, while the other half uh, were empty. And this was the arena of our, hy our hypothetical um, range dynamics. And we equipped each individual in our simulations with a genotype, and this genotype coded for two quantitative traits. The first trait that could evolve was the position of the environmental optimum so that uh, the evolution could shift the tolerance curve of each individual or population 
to the left or to the right. And the second quantitative trait was the, the variance of the tolerance curve. So this G1 term such that, um, yeah, more narrow or broader tolerance curves could evolve. On top of that, we installed a general specialist trade-off so that evolving a broader tolerance came at the cost of a lower maximum fitness. This uh, was a limitation to avoid the evolution of um, endless tolerance in our simulations. I just want to quickly mention that we also simulated the, the evolution of phenotypic plasticity as well in parallel, because this is a specific mechanism to achieve environmental tolerance. Um, and you're very welcome to have a look at the paper if you're interested in this aspect. I will stick now to the evolution of tolerance curve for the moment, and you can exchange broader tolerance, meaning higher plasticity, if you want to. Now, imagine you have a population that is adapted to the local environmental conditions. Um, so it aligned its optimum uh, environment condition with the local condition, but then the population experiences directional environmental change. And evolution now can help to cope with this change in two ways. Either it, evolution favors the shift of the op optimum conditions, so the shift of the highest point of the tolerance curve, or if this is not enough, it could also favor the evolution of broader tolerance, so higher tolerance in these populations. So when you see the results and you see populations that evolve a higher tolerance, this always is the result of evolution in response to directional environmental changes. Now let's go to the different uh, range dynamic scenarios that we simulated. I will explain all three of them and also show you this, the results immediately um, after. The first scenario was a niche expansion scenario. Here we opened the patches on the right in a stepwise fashion to be colonized by the species, such that after 210 years, the species could colonize all 42 patches. In doing so, in colonizing the new patches, the species had to adapt to novel environment condition it had never experienced before. Because before, you see this in the graph on the left, this species experienced environment conditions between 10 and 30, and then had to adapt to conditions beyond uh, 50 even. And here, the species solved this problem by evolving a higher tolerance at the expansion front. So in the right graph, you see patches and for each patch you see the tolerance level evolving in within this population. On the left patches you see a uniform tolerance levels across the 21 patches on the left, but in the range expansion part we have an elevated tolerance level because here to colonize new patches the populations had to adapt to novel environmental conditions and real, realize this by evolving higher tolerance levels. So remember in the niche expansion scenario, higher tolerance was evolving at the expansion front. In our second scenario, we um, simulated a range shift scenario. Here we kept the species needs constant, so um, the populations could not survive with anomaly conditions beyond 30 or below 10. And the range dynamics were driven by environmental change that after 210 years, all the 21 patches on the right were occupied. In this scenario, environmental change happened on a large scale and within population at the same rate. And you can see that at the trailing edge, there were populations that were initially habitable by the species, but then environmental conditions dropped and the patches got extinct. At the leading edge of the shifting range, we had the opposite. So we had detrimental conditions in the beginning, but as a result of environmental change, they could become habitable at one point of the shift. And in this scenario, we observe the following pattern. So again, we see the tolerance levels for the 42 patches. The dashed line on the left is um, the tolerance levels before the shift and the solid line tolerance levels after the shift. And in this scenario, we saw the highest tolerance to evolve in the patches at the trailing edge while those at the leading edge had uh, kept their tolerance levels. And why is this the case? When we look in the left graph in patch 22, this patch was the first to be colonized during the range shift. 
and since colonization had the longest history of ongoing environmental change. And the population within it solved this problem by evolving higher tolerance levels. Patch 32 or 31 was uh, colonized much later and since colonization had a shorter history of ongoing environmental change. That's why tolerance still increased, but to a lower extent. And at the expansion front or at the uh, leading edge, we had genotypes that were always able to move at the leading edge of the populations and follow its optimal environment conditions through space. So these genotypes at the leading edge, they do, did not experience environmental change over time because they could follow their sweet spot, basically. That's what, why they maintained their initial tolerance levels. In the third scenario, we again kept the species needs constant. And again, environmental change was driving the range dynamics, but here it was leading to a range expansion. And the reason why it caused the range expansion was that environmental change was asymmetric. So we had the highest rates of change at the, in patch 42 and no change in patch one. This could correspond to polar amplification that environmental changes are, for example, more pronounced at high latitudes compared to low latitudes. And here, in this ex extreme version of polar amplification, uh, this allowed for a range expansion. In this scenario, we observed the evolution of the highest tolerance in the middle of the range, while again at the range edges, the tolerance level stayed uh, the same. Um, this is interesting because even though we had the highest rates of change in patch 42, again, this patch was just recently colonized by genotypes that were always able to follow their optimal condition through space. While in the middle of the range, we had the most favor favorable combination of long history of environmental change and moderate rates of change. So to sum up, so we observed the evolution of the populations and mountain tolerance in all our scenarios. Uh, we saw the evolution of clients in tolerance, but these clients strongly differed between the scenarios of range dynamics. Sometimes highest tolerance at the leading edge, sometimes at the trailing edge. When you would have continued our simulation for a very, very long time, which we did not did, you would have observed the disappearance of the clients again because these patterns are transient patterns that only appear during the range dynamics and maintain for quite a while after dynamics, but eventually they will, they will disappear. So to sum up, we can yeah, confirm range dynamics are a challenge, not only because intraspecific variation makes it more difficult to project it in the future, but also because intraspecific variation might evolve in the course of range dynamics. We have seen different outcomes for very different drivers of range dynamics. And we have seen the emergence of transient patterns um, that appear that would not be visible at equilibri equilibrium situations. And with this, I'm at the end of the talk. Um, uh, I want to thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take questions.